The first speaker this evening, presenting for why Christianity at best accounts for reality, is Zachary Adair. Dr. Adair is a postdoctoral researcher in bacterial genomics at the Technical University of Munich. Uh, he has degrees in philosophy and biology from this university and wrote his PhD thesis analyzing microbial experimental evolution. I understood one of those words. <laughs> on the board of the New Zealand Christians in Science and has previously debated the existence of God with skeptics such as former Oxford professor Peter Atkins. Please welcome Zachary Dutton. Thanks everyone for being here, it's, it's great to be here. And I want to start with a quote uh, from a distinguished University of Auckland professor, uh, Robert Nola, who's here with us. He said um, in a recent uh, interview, I think all hell can break loose when you don't keep control of the rational grounds for believing. So firstly, thank you, um, Robert and Peter, for engaging in this really important discussion with us. And in response to this quote, I want to say that Tom and I agree uh, fully, and we're curious to hear the rational grounds for believing in atheism, the claim that God does not exist, or naturalism, the claim that nature, that only nature exists. These are claims that the NZARH is founded on, so I hope to hear some defense of them. As a Christian, I believe that there is a reason for the existence, order, comprehensibility, and emergent properties of this universe. That reason is the loving God revealed in Jesus Christ the God of Christian theism. God is the creator of the universe. God is personal, with an interest in rationality, relationships, and human beings. But the claim of atheism is that there is no such God, and no transcendent personal being. Naturalism is a particular version of atheism. It claims that reality is limited to the physical universe explained by science. Reality is not dependent on something transcending the universe. Instead, it is a brute fact. Naturalism, I want to suggest, is a worldview on the run. The idea that the world is not dependent on God, but exists by virtue of its own nature, is not new. Views similar to this were held by some ancient Greek thinkers. And up on the screen, I've, I've listed some of the beliefs which naturalism has historically been associated with. Historically, it has been associated with these ideas, along with others which have also been rejected. Firstly, materialism, that only matter exists. This has been rejected by modern physics. Secondly, the logical problem of evil, that the existence of evil is logically incompatible with the existence of God. This has been universally rejected by modern philosophy of religion. Thirdly, Hume's argument against miracles, by the Scottish philosopher David Hume. And he argued that hum uh, uniform human experience of natural causes rules out belief in miracles. But this has been rejected through properly understanding probability theory by people such as the agnostic uh, John Ehrman. Fourthly, an eternal universe. Belief the universe is eternal. This has been brought into serious question by this discovery of the expansion of the universe last century. And finally, reductionism, that everything can be reduced down to physics. This belief has been rejected by most modern philosophers of science and mind. The Oxford theologian and intellectual historian, previously a biophysicist, Professor Alistair McGrath, was himself formerly a committed atheist. He argues that modern atheism has gravitated towards science as providing justification for its beliefs as a kind of last stand in the face of rising religiosity around the world. The new atheism is a fair response to the slow death of the myth of the inevitable progress of the Enlightenment. So naturalism is a deficient hypothesis on the back foot against the tide of history. That's what history seems to suggest. And it looks to me like it's ad hoc. It's always changing to fit the data. But Christian theism, in contrast, is not ad hoc. It is based on quite independent historical evidences, and those evidences have not changed. The hypothesis provided by these historical evidences concerning Jesus Christ 
happens to help in explaining many other features of the world, which I think is a remarkable result. So not only is naturalism an historical failure, as I briefly summarized, but we think that it's playing explanatory Jenga. Removing God from the picture has major effects on one's worldview. Beneath the surface, it leaves many fundamental features of our world unexplained and unexplainable, and we'll quickly explain why. We believe that the existence, order, and comprehensibility of the universe point clearly to a transcendent personal cause. Firstly, the existence. The universe consists of things which could be different, and as itself, the sum of physical things could have different properties. This is a basic assumption of most people who are working in, for instance, cosmology. The universe could be different, that's why we can model different scenarios. Things which could be different cry out for an explanation of why they are as they are, rather than otherwise. Science is a fair-minded response to this cry for explanation. But naturalism offers no explanation of why this universe, considered as the totality of physical reality, exists as it does. Yet theism does offer an explanation. If you say that all of reality is contingent, though, one possible naturalist reply, you're saying that even basic mathematical logical truths could have conceivably been different. And yet it seems to me that any version of naturalism which is not ontologically extravagant, such as some kind of maximal multiverse, seems to have no place for something which exists by necessity, but is able to give rise to contingent reality. So it looks like it must be contingent reality unexplained. Secondly, order in the universe, I think, points to a transcendent personal cause. So one argument from order is suggested by the atheist philosopher of science, Nancy Cartwright. She argues that laws of nature are typically explained by naturalists in one of two ways. Either as what are effectively abstract objects, things like the concept of a triangle or numbers. Or secondly, in terms of brute regularities or patterns in the world that just happen to exist. But she argues that neither is an adequate account of the prescriptive nature of laws. <coughs> Modern science was founded, however, overwhelmingly by theists who saw natural law as expressions of God's sovereign will, which explains their prescriptive character. Without God, we should abandon laws of nature. Another reason to favor God as an explanation of fundamental cosmic order but it cannot have a scientific explanation, or the order would not be fundamental. The only explanatory option remaining, which we're familiar with, if the order is to be explained, appears to be a personal explanation. Another quote from philosopher Anthony Flew, those scientists who point to the mind of God as the explanation for natural laws become a vision of reality that emerges from the conceptual heart of modern science. It is a vision that I personally find compelling and irrefutable. In 2004, this leading atheist, and still, interestingly, an honorary associate of the NZARH, publicly declared his renunciation of atheism and belief in deism on the basis of recent work on the kinds of arguments that I'm offering. So I highly recommend his co-author 2007 book, There Is a God. A second argument from order in the universe. The order we observe is incredibly improbable, if naturalism is true, and incredible specificity is required to allow the existence of carbon-based life forms. The fine-tuned outcome is surprising given naturalism, but less surprising given theism, so it constitutes evidence for theism. The exact numbers, uh, many of which I could quote, don't matter here. The point is that if the values of various fundamental concepts, which affect processes such as the expansion of the universe, the creation of heavier elements and stars, were very slightly different, then carbon-based life could not <coughs> exist. In a foreword to a recent book on this topic, the Nobel Prize winning and agnostic Australian cosmologist Brian Schmidt puts it this way, Humanity appears to be part of a remarkable set of circumstances, involving a special time around a special planet, which orbits a special star, all within a specially constructed universe. 
It is this set of conditions which has allowed humanity or humans to ponder our place in space and time. I have no idea why we're here, but I do know the universe is beautiful. The general point about the surprise and specialness of this universe has been stated by many atheistic scientists, including uh, NZARH honorary associate per Herman Bondi in an early book on cosmology in the 1950s. He describes uh, such coincidences as very striking and possibly having deep significance, but quite mysterious. Finally, the comprehensibility of the universe. We can, to a remarkably large extent, understand this universe. We can compress huge amounts of experience into elegant mathematical formulae and use them to predict what will happen next. There are three, I think, related issues here. Firstly, that abstract mathematics should even apply to the physical universe at all. Secondly, that equations favored by humans for aesthetic reasons should have predictive value in science that human beings should have come to begin to truly understand the deep structure of the universe. Each is at least somewhat surprising, given naturalism, but less surprising in a world governed by the mind of God. The naturalist, who is a scientific realist, makes a surprising claim that our undesigned human faculties, which arose through an accidental process, give us a picture of the deep structure of the world that is essentially correct despite the infinite number of other theories that could also fit the data available. Albert Einstein said, I've never found a better expression than religious with this trust in the rational nature of reality and its peculiar accessibility to the human mind. Cambridge astrophysicist uh, put it uh, as up on the slide. So in conclusion, our universe amazingly somehow exists. It's ordered and it's comprehensible. Christian belief, which began 2,000 years ago because of historical uh, realities about Jesus of Nazareth, remarkably has explanatory power regarding these fundamental features of our universe. Atheism and naturalism do not. So to conclude, I quote from an account by <coughs> MIT computer science professor Rosalind Picard of her journey of exploring these things. In denying God's existence, I realized I was making assumptions that were based on no deeper truths than those I sought to discredit. Nonetheless, the appearance of much of religion still made it very hard for me to want to investigate religious faith. Don't confuse these human failings with the mounds of historical evidence for who Christ was, for what he said and did. Look at the accounts of the historical Jesus. Read about his life and his resurrection. Examine the evidence. Decide what you will believe. Thank you.